Oh, you're rolling. Yeah, yeah, so oh, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I was waiting. I was looking for a red button. Okay, okay. <laughs> nervous about what are you getting into here uh trying to make it up mount washington <laughs> right, what do you know about the climb have you done it before uh, i have not but i know it's 7.6 miles average grade is 12 percent yeah there's not a lot of recon to be done with 12 percent 12 percent is 12 percent so uh yeah you just cross your fingers <laughs> last 50 feet is about 20 or 22 percent uh i think it's the first time they finished paving the whole road, so we've got pros like Phil Guyman here trying to get the record. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Just shooting to make it up. <laughs> I'm Lisa McCoy. I'm the events and marketing director here at the Mount Washington Auto Road and Great Glen Trails Outdoor Center. This event is 49 years old. This is the 49th annual Mount Washington Auto Road Bicycle Hill Climb, and it started way back when as we had a foot race that is now in its 60th year and uh, this mountain has been home to athletic feats for as long as the mountain has been around and I think that the challenge just beckoned for a rider and it started off very small and then it just over time has grown and now it has reached uh, an amazing point where there's some 450, 500 riders challenging themselves up the Mount Washington Auto Road, which is probably one of the hardest hill climbs in the world. The Mount Washington Summit is 6,288 feet, which is over a mile, of course. The base elevation is 1,400 feet, so as you climb the 7.6 miles to the summit, you're gaining over 4,000 feet of elevation, which is tremendous. If you are a hill climber, you know that in that short distance, that is a stout hill climb. I actually know, I did time. this once in high school, and then once three years ago. I'm trying to beat high school me this year, and I'm not sure I can do it. Three years ago, I beat high school me, but it's been, it's been a pandemic since then, Tom. It's possible we no longer have the gas to beat high school Colin. He's certainly way more than high school Colin. <laughs> high school Colin was just a cross your skier that did this. You want, you want to hear some more good times? Guess who brought two right-handed gloves and apparently will not be riding with gloves today. Tin Mountain Conservation Center is an environmental education uh, organization, nonprofit, located in Albany, New Hampshire. and. We do a variety of programs in the greater Mount Washington Valley, working in uh, the local schools. We run summer camps. We have a nature program series for adults and families, all exposing um, people to the natural world around them. And we also have an extensive research department. This event is, one, is our largest fundraiser for Tim Mountain, and uh, it helps us raise the funds that we need to do all those other things that I just mentioned. So it's an important part of uh, of our year. How are you feeling about this? Good, got my old clunker and I'm gonna have a good old time today. <laughs> it is just a spectacular day, huh? It is a great day. So there's been 48 hill climbs before today, or before tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the 49th annual Mount Washington Auto Road Bicycle Hill Climb. I mean, like, you know, we could talk about Mount Washington and what it, what it represents. And it isn't just a road up a mountain. And there's plenty of bicycle hill climbs in the area but none of them boasts the reputation that Mount Washington holds, which is the worst weather in the world. The steep sections are unrelentingly steep, and it's a challenge that most riders, you know, this is their bucket list item. Some riders have done this. Gosh, I look back at old registration data, I and mean, they've been doing it for decades. And those riders are the seasoned pros up there. And then we have all the new people who just want to take on the challenge. Oh, I've 
been rolling around the idea of Mount Washington for many years. You know, it's just one of those things that I guess you check off your bucket list. Um, so I just finally got to a point where I said, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it this year. I think the thing that I'm most looking forward to is making it to the top of Mount Washington because I've never been to the top of Mount Washington and lived in New Hampshire the majority of my life. I don't think I'm afraid of anything. Um, the goal is just not to die. That's, that's the goal. So. <laughs> I get so many emails from people who love the mountain, people that did it before they had chemo, did it in between their chemo, did it to heal from cancer. They're battling some mental issue and they're taking on this challenge and they're very sharing with these stories. And so over the last nine months of planning, I've really started to understand what this means to everybody and it means something different and it's really special. I've ridden up one mountain before. Um, I went and did Whiteface three weeks ago because I realized the longest yeah. climb we have in New Jersey is like a mile and I was and potentially so in trouble <laughs> for this one. So, um, but I just I thought it looked everybody cool. Be so, <laughs> decided why not? Yeah, <laughs> should be fun. But how different so, from uh, you know, a 45 minute hour long cycle yeah. cross race you think this hour plus climb? You know what? I think heart rate is going to look identical. It's just going to be totally different from a power perspective. Heart rate and Mentally, you're just going to be, somebody. you never know, Jackie you know, through the roof quickly and, and trying to keep it going. Today, so and then the only difference is instead of like sprint recover technical skills, it's just going to be like just keep pedaling. So yeah, we'll see how that works. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in uh, just kind of seeing how your legs feel and rolling with it and not worrying too much about what the power meter says. And uh, Phil and I started out together and we were together until about four miles or so. And uh, where the dirt, um, where there used to be the dirt road, that sort of like left hand turn where it pitches up a little bit, um, put in a little bit of a dig. And for a second there, it looks like I had actually um, dropped, dropped Phil and I put maybe like 15, 20 seconds into him. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I couldn't, couldn't stay away. He uh, sort of reeled me back in and we came in towards the finish together. And yeah, he just he had a much, much better kick than I did. He uh, dropped you in the last like, I don't know, 100 meters or so. Um, but it's, you know, it's the most exciting version of Mount Washington I've done. So just, you know, super exciting day. No, this was, I don't know what like the closest Mount Washington finish is. It's definitely the closest of the, the few that I've done. Um, it wasn't quite a sprint, but like we were together until the last couple hundred meters. It was, I, I was kind of leading the beginning. Uh, he took over and just had 10 seconds on me. And then the last little bit, uh, I, I squeezed it out. I had a little more gas than Eric. Um, I think we both made each other faster just uh, steering each other's butt. This was my fourth Local time, yeah. Kid. I live in Jackson, so this is the closest thing I have to a hometown race. All right, so what's your strategy but coming to this? What were, what last were last year I paced it really bad. I went out uh, I went out way, way, <clears throat> way too hard in the first five minutes and, and it imploded. So this year I was super conservative. Like I was just riding a, a tempo. Congratulations. A tempo early on and I didn't I didn't start trying to get into my threshold power until probably about halfway up. So the pacing it conservatively was the way to go. The worst part? The worst part is uh, miles one and two. Miles one and two are the worst part of the whole climb. If you can get through those feeling good, you know you're gonna do all right. You're on a steel bike. Yeah, it, I've, I've got it down. I'd say it's, I don't know, 16 and a half, I would guess. All right, so Mount Washington first time with Jeremy Powers. Yeah, yeah, we were uh, out here. What was your plan coming into this? What were you thinking? What were you afraid of? What were you looking forward to? How well, go? yeah, the thing was, is we came into this and I was talking to Phil Guyman about the tactics and I, you know, I was gonna lead him out and then I decided that I just wanted to go for my own. And then right at the last minute, you know what I said? I don't wanna be competitive. So I just actually grabbed a GoPro. I went up, I talked to a lot of people along the way 
and jammed out and um, at one point uh, stopped and got some water on my face because I had the sweat coming in my eyes um, and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful day. So I told a couple fibs in there but nothing major. <laughs> It was a beautiful day, and uh, it was hard though. I got stuck in my 32, and I need to spin. When you go up this climb, it's better if you're spinning. A really nice spin, and I got stuck in my 32, so I was mashing a little bit. But you know what? I got up here, and that's the main thing. Have you done this thing a bunch? Or? I have done it. I did it 10 years ago, and uh, set the record. I set the record in my age group. So I was hoping to do it again this year, but because I was stuck in the 32 and I was mashing, I don't think I got it, but I, I feel great that I finished, you know, because it's a, it's definitely a hard, it's a hard race, you know, but it's challenging. So when you finish, you feel really good about it. Oh, that was harder than I remember which is bad because I remember it being really hard because you don't ever coast and it's 12% and I geared like I was in better shape than I am. And uh, yeah, it was really hot. Surprisingly hot is what I would say. Fully, I fully unzipped and tried to be as dramatic as possible yeah. for, the, for the many fans down there in the woods. See your dad yet? I don't know, I think he's done. I don't know where he is though. He didn't catch me, which seemed very possible. He weighs literally 50 pounds less than me. Literally? Literally. No. 121. How many of these have you done? This is my 11th. Going back to 1989. And it gets harder every year. My takeaway from it is I need more than a one-to-one -one gear ratio. It used to work for me. It's a real struggle for me now. I really fought on that 22% section. The pavement's really rough and you're spent when you hit it. So 18 minutes, what's that mean? Well, you beat me though. I did. I managed to win the family by four minutes or so. I didn't die. I thought I was going to several times, but I didn't die. I didn't die. Pat is Pat. Um, there are several points in the road where you just look up and you can see where you're going and it's very far from where you are. Um, and it just doesn't relent. There are very few spots on the hill that, uh, that level out a little bit. The views are amazing. We couldn't have had a nicer day. I mean, it's just spectacular up here. So worth it. Yeah, this is my fastest time. I've I've now won it four times. Um, this is my first time under 51 minutes, so just over a little bit over 50 minutes today. Um, yeah, really, and I think that's just like having a smarter pacing strategy and like a little less bike racing tactics and looking at the other guy a little more like I'm going to ride my own pace and, and bump the top. Right, so you ended up going really damn fast. How'd it, how'd it go out there? I, I honestly was like, I put ridiculous, well, what? For this isn't ridiculous gearing, but for someone who lives in Jersey, what felt like ridiculous gearing on my bike, I just said, just keep pedaling and try not to blow up. And I was like, it's gonna work or not. And it worked out okay, but it was, at the beginning, I definitely had to just let people go because I was like, I can't keep up with them. And I clawed a little bit back, but uh, Courtney was flying. So I was like, you were gone, quarter mile in. So yeah, I was like, I was like yeah, I'm, not, I'm never going to see her again. But no, it was, uh, it was good. But literally it was like, well, you're out of gears, so just keep pedaling this one and hope your legs allow you to. It was cool. It was, so this is, uh, it's just nothing I've ever done before. So I feel like for me, it was just, it was exciting and also coming over treeline, the breeze felt so good. You hear all these horror stories about the temps on Mount Washington. Today we were super spoiled, but actually I was dripping sweat. So getting that breeze was just like exciting. And then once you could see the tower at the top too, you get a little bit of a second wind, uh, but although that's when all the brutal parts come, so.
this before? No, first time, rookie rookie year. Okay, but you, are you a hill, have you done I'm a, a lot of hill climbing? Uh, I'm a hill climber, I'm, this body's not built for downhill. All right, so how does this stack up uh, compared to other hill climbs you've done? This is the most awesome hill climb I've ever done in my entire life, averaging 12%. Uh, with zero flat rest, so totally my jam. Can't wait to come back next year already. Does anything surprise you about this? Uh, I would say it's it's just as daunting as it looks. I definitely need different gearing next year, so uh, I learned my lesson, but I'll, I'll be coming back with some good gears next year. What do you year. run for gearing? What, what will you do for gearing? Uh, I ran a 50-34 and an 11-32. I definitely need the one-to-one, -one, so I'll be back with a 34 next year. They did not exist this year when I when I learned when I learned the gradient. How do, you, how do you prep for this? Do you prep specifically for the mountain you're attacking, or is it just, um, you just, it's just do your threshold? Training? I just pretty much train at threshold. I live in the mountains up in Marin, so Mount Tam is my backyard. So I train in the mountains as much as I can, and then I use Zwift as well. So race for Saurus and, you know, Eric is on our team, David and John, and we all race like out to Zwift and a bunch of the hills there. All right, so rating one to 10, Tam versus this. What's Tam, what's this? This doesn't compare. The, t Tam, Tam is a pimple compared to this thing. This is awesome. <laughs> I, and for m many reasons, I think someone should come and do this. Uh, the first, it is a massive feat of what you train and do. When I ran the survey, what I learned was a lot of people just ride a lot of hills and prepare for this. So you don't have to be a crazy athlete, you don't have to have a coach, you just have to ride a lot and, and be ready for it. And so I think that physical challenge of coming out is, is a huge accomplishment. But then you share something with a lot of people that not everybody gets to do. You can only ride up once a year through this event and then you have new friends that also share that same experience that you just had. And I think that's really the important part because we had a gentleman here who's done it 39 times and we've had people it was their first time and these are bonds that can't, they don't leave. It's, you know, you're not going to get that from just a charity ride or you know a, a gravel race you know something that you can do all the time um, this is really a place where you know you go out and do that challenge with a lot of people that are like-minded and I don't know I think there's something cool about being a part of that in something so big and iconic in New England all I do is ride climbs I've flown all over the world to ride climbs uh, this one is one that I want to fly back to and do over and over. Uh, there's just something between the event and, and the, the group here and then just how insanely horribly steep it is and, and the people with bells the last 500 meters cheering you on. Um, it's, it's a scene that like I haven't found anywhere else. It'd be cool to go up the train or take the train down. I gotta do that next time. Do you see the big trains that go up the side? We gotta do that.